recognize the Honorable Premier, Dr. Orlando Smith, Justice Barry Leon, Commercial Judge of the Commercial Division in the Virgin Islands, and all of those distinguished participants who are here, uh, Lord Goldsmith, who has arrived, Learned Queen's Council, Mr. Ferrara, who is sitting in the front, and who has acted as a High Court judge, and of course, as the Justice of Appeal from time to time. I am pleased to see a room that seems to be almost full to capacity this morning. And it is indeed my <coughs> esteemed pleasure to offer these remarks on the opening of this arbitration and well conference under the team Horizons of Opportunity. I am elated indeed at the opportunity and the invitation of Business BVI to join in welcoming you on this occasion, which is aptly described as an auspicious one. Last evening at the first lecture in the Dr. J.S. Archibald Memorial Lecture Series, I learned that this week is being celebrated as BVI Arbitration Week. That inaugural lecture, given by none other than the esteemed and renowned Lord Goldsmith, provided, in my view, a most fitting precursor to the commencement of this conference and the launch of the BVI International Arbitration Center. And so I wish to commend Business BVI and the BVI Financial Services Commission for organizing this conference. And I express my profound thanks to them for extending this invitation to me to offer these remarks. With the broad spectrum of accessibility which technology affords, the world, as we know, is quickly becoming one global marketplace, despite the geographical divide. Technology has in many realms given the feeling that no place is too far from one another. This has significantly enhanced the manner in which business is conducted internationally. Consequently, small island territories like the Virgin Islands must ensure that despite their geographical size and location, that they are able to stand with the giant nations in providing a service which is integral in the area of commerce. Considering the trend that the world of commerce has taken over the last few decades, it is no surprise that arbitration has gained increasing popularity in many countries the world over. Last evening, Lord Goldsmith in his lecture apprised us of the strides made by arbitration centers in such places as Singapore and Hong Kong and the fact that the Caribbean has been somewhat slow in this development. In fact, we know that the arbitration laws in many of our Caribbean states are archaic, and in some virtually non-existent in terms of their operation and efficacy. It is apparent that the Virgin Islands has recognized the value of arbitration as an alternative method of settling disputes arising in both domestic and international commercial relations, as it affords parties an often more expedient opportunity and perhaps less expensive one to reach a resolution as opposed to having to go through the often lengthier court processes. For this reason, conferences like this one are commendable as it provides an opportunity for key players to meet to share and disseminate information on the arbitration process and the benefits which may be derived from its utilization. By so doing, stakeholders are kept abreast of the developments affecting commercial transactions <coughs> and the localities, avenues, and methodologies which may be deployed in resolving commercial disputes. This is necessary for the success of arbitration in any country and the Virgin Islands is no exception. In order for any country to maximize the use of arbitral proceedings, it must ensure that the legislative framework is put in place and is able to meet the expectations of the process. A 
I'm certain that in the Virgin Islands, the coming into force of the Arbitration Act, number 13 of 2013, on the 1st of October 2014, is most welcome as it replaces the outdated Arbitration Act 1976, which was not well suited to the demands that the revolution of commercial litigation caused globally. By so doing, the Virgin Islands has shown its commitment to enact the relevant domestic law to facilitate commercial arbitration and the enforcement of foreign arbitral awards. The Act has also adopted, with some minor modifications, the UNSTRAL model law on international commercial arbitration, which provides rules and arbitration proceedings and is recognized internationally by many countries. This is significant as it embraces the UN Commission's objective to achieve uniformity in the law of arbitral procedures and provide for the specific needs of international commercial arbitration practice. By so doing, the Virgin Islands has espoused this modern legal framework in an effort to support and facilitate commercial arbitrations, including recognition and enforcement. The incorporation of that unstructural model law into local legislation will also greatly assist in aligning the law governing the arbitral procedure in the Virgin Islands with that of other countries around the world, taking into account the particular features and needs of international commercial arbitration. This will ensure that in the Virgin Islands, arbitration will be conducted according to international standards, allowing for domestic arbitral awards to be recognized internationally. In Lord Goldsmith's lecture, he outlined in clear and succinct terms the pros and cons of the development of an arbitration center in the Virgin Islands. In my view, he has highlighted various challenges which warrant serious consideration in ensuring BVI's success in such an endeavor. I note that Section 93 of the Act establishes the Arbitration Center as the body to administer the arbitrations seated in the Virgin Islands, and that by Section 94, the Financial Services Commission is charged with the responsibility of setting up that center. And that some of the functions of that center will include providing the necessary facilities for the conduct of arbitral proceedings and mediation, and also for providing such dispute resolution services as are essential to the conduct of arbitral proceedings. These matters are key to the success of any arbitration center. Also, it is now known that the Virgin Islands became a signatory to the New York Convention on the recognition and enforcement of foreign arbitral awards. And in so doing, what is now ensured is that arbitration awards which are made pursuant to the Arbitration Act in the Virgin Islands will be enforceable in all countries signed up to the New York Convention. And so this has in fact remedied the hindrance which was previously encountered, whereby arbitral awards from the Virgin Islands were not readily enforceable in other New York Convention member countries. There can be no doubt that the step of establishing an international arbitration center is a timely one. It is one which should be seen and embraced as the next dimension or complementary process to the commercial division of the court. There is often much discussion concerning the perceived tension between the arbitration process and the processes of the court. This sometimes is normally driven when a party to an arbitration agreement is seeking to get out of its arbitration agreement. It is not unusual also for a party to seek to initiate proceedings such as insolvency 
as a route around arbitration. It is therefore important that arbitration agreements are carefully and comprehensively drafted. The times have moved on and courts are less and less inclined to view the arbitration process as an encroachment upon its domain, but rather as a legitimate regime which complements it. Indeed, it is no more than giving effect to the party's commercial bargain. The court, then, must remain mindful of this and ensure at all times that when called upon to intervene, and if it does, and in so doing, it is in effect <coughs> preserving and giving effect to the party's bargain. The role of the court is not to destroy commercial contracts freely entered into, but rather to give full effect to them. It is well recognized in the world <coughs> of commerce that businessmen and women are much better placed to agree and decide for themselves the bases and manner in which their potential disputes may be resolved. It is also recognized that judges may not necessarily or always be the most commercially wise of persons or have the requisite specialized expertise and thus may not necessarily provide the most suitable recourse for a commercially sensible resolution. That said, it is equally appreciated that the court will always have a role to play in relation to arbitration, not the least of which is in respect of recognition and enforcement. Very importantly, the court will continue to be called upon to interpret the very provisions of an arbitration agreement. In fact, to decide whether a dispute has in fact arisen and whether the arbitral mechanism therefore has been triggered. In dealing with such matters, the court must remain astute to ensure that it is indeed giving effect to the party's bargain. In this regard, I wish to note that the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court has been actively engaged in seeking to advance arbitration as a timelier, more cost-effective alternative to resolving disputes, particularly in the area of commerce. The court has seen a marked increase in the number of international commercial arbitral awards brought before it to be recognized and enforced. It was accordingly deemed necessary to ensure that our judiciary is well equipped to handle such matters when called upon to adjudicate at the stage of the arbitral process when judicial intervention is required. And to this end, therefore, in October last year, members of our judiciary benefited from participation in a high-level meeting, the fourth of its kind, focusing on the role of the judiciary in international commercial arbitration. This meeting was hosted jointly by the Department of International Law of the Organization of American States and the Judicial Education Institute of the Court. And so all the developments which I have mentioned earlier will essentially make the BVI Arbitration Center the nucleus of the arbitration operation in the Virgin Islands. Consequently, I am pleased that the topics and areas on the agenda for this conference include whether arbitration can, how arbitration can make the economy attractive, the attraction of arbitration as an option for dispute resolution, the attitude and experience of the BVI courts to arbitration, and indeed how to create opportunities driven by arbitration. This diversity of topics to be covered and the wealth of experience which the various facilitators and presenters will be bringing to this conference is sure that it will be a stimulating and informative session. My only regret is being unable to be in attendance throughout the entire session given the Court of Appeals full calendar over the course of this entire week. In closing, I take the opportunity to once again applaud the efforts of Business BVI, the BVI Financial Services Commission in an organizing this conference. I also commend the 
<coughs> stakeholders, the government of the Virgin Islands, for taking what I consider to be this bold and timely move in forging ahead with the establishment of an international commercial arbitration center. At this point, you have the benefit of a commercial court judge who comes with an immense wealth of international commercial arbitration experience, Justice Leon. And I want to assure you that you have also the full support of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. And so this unique confluence of skills, experience, and opportunity underpinned by a modernized legal framework sets the stage for a successful arbitration center. And so as Chief Justice, as well as on my own behalf, I wish this initiative every success. At the end of this conference, I have no doubt that we will all be more enlightened as the arbitral process is placed into deeper and more meaningful context. And on that note, I end by bidding you a warm welcome and in wishing you a very successful conference.